In this part of the beginner's guide, we're gonna take a look at body paint. Now, there are certainly some better, newer options out there for painting and drawing directly on our 3D models, but if we just need to do something quick or nothing too detailed, then body paint is just fine. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about body paint or really the, the paint layout here. Um, I have two different cubes we're, we're gonna work with. And like I said, I typically use body paint um, is a way to kind of create masks or to let me know where I need to add in details, change different materials. And then if I need to, I'll take that mask into Photoshop, clean it up and do more to it there. If I'm really doing a lot of painting um, with my textures or, or that type of thing, painting on my geometry, I am probably going to go over to a program like Substance. Um, now, like I said, we have our objects here. The first thing um, I wanna point out is that we need to lay out the UVs for these objects. And so they're both editable objects uh, because if we just switch to the UV edit tab really quick, you'll see that our polygons here all overlap. And so when we go to paint, when we paint on one part of this object, it's gonna show up on other parts of the object we do not want. Um, and we'll get started here in the paint tab because there is a pretty quick way to get this process started. Now the paint tab has changed things up quite a bit. Um, in terms of different palettes and, and whatnot, we have colors, brushes, and settings here. Um, even though this looks like a regular attribute manager and layers, the layers are going to be the layers for our texture. We also have um, a bunch of tools for painting and creating um, our textures on the left-hand side here. Most of these are very similar to what you might find in Photoshop. Um, so what we're going to do is start with the paint setup wizard rather than the UV um, edit to unwrap this. This is going to make this process go a little bit quicker. And what I'm going to do is one object at a time or else it'll create just a single material with kind of the default setting. So cube one, which is this one here, I'm going to make sure is selected. The other one is turned off. I also want to um, make sure that the settings here remain the same. The default automatic packed UVs works the best um, for simple geometric objects like this, though it's not perfect as we'll see. Um, it's going to create our material for us, create a texture um, in the color channel that we're going to work with. It could create others, um, but I'm going to stick with just this. And I've already changed this, but uh, I believe the minimum is 10 and the maximum is 1024. But as you saw, I like to actually put those up to 2048. So that way I know exactly what size of texture I'm getting and I don't end up with something too small. All right, nothing worse than having to remake or repaint something because it wasn't um, large enough. So I'll hit finish. We'll see it goes through and applies that material. If you check in the texture UV editor now, we can see uh, that it has been laid out. But like I said, it's not perfect. And so rather than squares uh, for each of these, we let's go here. It's a little bit easier to see. Um, we have these rectangles. Now we could try and change this, get rid of some of that distortion and stretching, but this will be just fine for today. And if you open up your material manager, it's gonna look a little bit different as well. You can kind of expand it to see some information about um, the texture. This would also be how you could change um, between the different textures you just created in those different properties. Now this is a standard material, not a redshift material, um, but what I typically do is save out this texture uh, and then load it into a redshift material or take it into Photoshop and, and do whatever I need to with it. Uh, in our layers, panel now you can now get a sense of what I was talking about how this is more like Photoshop what's the ability to create layers layer sets and masks opacity blending modes visibility all that good stuff now um, we can get to some very useful options by either right clicking on the layer in the material manager um, for things like saving the textures merging um, a lot of those other things we were just seeing right here, um, but you can also flatten and whatnot, duplicate layers. You can also get to those same options by clicking on the functions menu in the layers panel. Uh, now, how I would start out with this is by creating a layer that has our UV template. So that way, if I save this out, um, I can bring it into Photoshop and I can see where my polygons are laid out. I can get a better sense of where is, um, you know, where everything is, where, um, you know, th this lines up with my geometry. So that way, when I go to paint something, I know exactly where it's going to end up on my model. So under the layer uh, menu in the texture UV editor, we want to choose create UV mesh layer. Now, it's a little bit difficult to see 
but it is there. We do have a new layer here called UV mesh layer. Um, and if I was to switch here to my move tool, um, we could now move this and you can kind of see that it's pretty much that same layout um, that we are seeing with the actual geometry. And at this point, you know, we could go to town uh, painting this, doing whatever. We do have a rectangle selection if we do want to make a selection here. Um, once you do make a selection, you can transform it either by rotating it uh, or scaling it, okay, which can be a little bit trickier to grab, okay. And I know I'm just doing it with kind of our template layer here, which isn't a whole lot. Uh, I will say the, the keys, the shortcut keys are not the same as Photoshop. So I constantly find myself trying to deselect or, you know, those types of things and it, it's not working. All right, uh, we do have our magic wand. So if you like that, we do have our eyedropper for eyedropping different colors. If you'll notice down here, we have the same kind of colors for fill and stroke. And you can remember, come back up here to colors to change them as well. Uh, but you can also just click and it'll switch to this tab if you have something else um, selected. We have our brush tool, which we'll come back to. And if you left click and hold um, on any options, uh, tools that have that little tick, you will see some other options like colorize. I skipped it up top here, but you have select color range, you know, and your different marquee options. Okay. Once again, if you know Photoshop, then this isn't too much of a, a surprise or, or too much different than what you might expect. We have our gradient. Why don't we create a gradient? I'm going to create a new layer here and drag out my gradient. Okay. Interesting that I didn't get my colors there. Not 100% certain why, but we'll we'll come back to that later. All right, so um, what we're going to do now, um, I'll finish talking about these, I guess. Blur, sharpen, smear, text. Okay, you can create it. And actually, before you create it, select it, go to the attributes, and that's where you can change what it says and, and whatnot. Um, the size is, we don't quite have the box like, um, in Photoshop to make things a little bit more convenient to, to edit after, so be careful of that. Um, the ability to um, draw polygons, zoom in, all that basic functionality. And, you know, really, the brush tools where I wanna spend a lot of our time here, as well as in kind of our, our 2D view. Since, you know, now we can come in and paint things exactly where we want them. And of course, now the color is working, great. At any point, you can switch to the 3D view. And honestly, I could come in here and just start painting in 3D. Now, one of the things I didn't mention um, is that when you are laying out the UVs here, you do want to be very careful about these seams. And especially on a more detailed model, that could be um, a bigger deal. Uh, because if I come in here and decide, oh, I want some extra detail or I want something you know, to kind of drip down or whatever here, uh, this is not going to line up with the the other seam and we can see that now that's absolutely not something i would want but you can see how there is that gap there if i'm not careful and even when i'm painting in 3d it jumps from one surface to the next so you kind of have to go back and forth you can see it doesn't really match up but that's where i would come um in photoshop and try and fix that maybe even the 2d view depending on you know how things are looking okay or maybe I decide I need to move that polygon so it does, um, it is joined there, the seam is connected, and that way I don't run into that problem. But usually you can just kind of go back and forth um, and get it, you know, good enough. But that's why seams matter, the layout matters, and all that good stuff. That gradient was probably not a good idea. It seems to make it much harder to see things. So um, I'll turn that off and just create a new layer. Okay, great. You can see the um, UV template layer there, uh, just letting us know, but you know, not a huge deal. Back to the brushes though, because I do think there's some really interesting things there. You know, like I said, I typically use this to create masks. So I may come in here, um, make sure my color is set to black or white, since those are primarily the colors I'll work with. So, you know what, I may want to add some detail on the corner of this. So let's paint this solid. All right. Or as close to solid as I, you know, need. Maybe fix any large gaps. Okay. You know, maybe I want this seam here. So I'm going to try and make sure it gives me this. But yeah, all of our brush settings, like you might expect in Photoshop, um, most of them are here from different shapes, 
different profiles. You can adjust the size here or just by using your middle mouse button and, and moving the mouse left and right. Uh, opacity controls, you know, how, how much of that we're seeing. Hardness, just like there, gives our brush a more defined edge. Spacing, space out those a little bit. And this can be more useful for other types of brushes as um, we'll see, but to get different, a different look, something a little bit more natural, organic and not just so repetitive, spacing can help. Squeeze, if you want to turn this into an oval instead of a circle, rotation, which can matter if you're squeezing it. All right, and what's nice is um, if you click on any of these, you can then tie them to different things, um, especially if you're using a tablet, it could be um, useful for, you know, pen pressure, pen tilt, things like that. As I don't have one plugged in, um, we're not seeing that stuff. Um, jitter, also super useful to add some randomness, right? To this brush, add some rotation. It'd be nice if the rotation was per, per one. But yeah, now we have something a little bit more kind of chaotic. Now there's a bunch of, of preset brushes built in here that you can open up by clicking on that little arrow. And I'm gonna move this just completely on screen. And once again, you know, if you're doing painting, this could be useful, but if you just, you know, wanna give yourself a little bit more detail in your mask, you can do that. So double click on one and see it's there, I can see it's way too big. So I'll, I'll make it smaller and this looks more like a splat. So yeah, if I just need some quick extra details, some grunge, that type of thing. This one is working across, actually. So uh, it is, this one is working across seems because it is um, connected, right? So it's showing up connected there and that's why it's important to determine where those seams go, where they should line up. So you can do that, you know, rotation and jitter would have been really useful for this one to try and get it a little bit more random rotate it a little bit each time. But we have, like I said, some different brush options in here that can make this useful um, for painting in a little bit of grunge, a little bit of extra detail, okay? So really that's it. I'm gonna go through the second one though because uh, when you use the Paint Setup Wizard on it, it gives us a different look. It's gonna give us a new material and um, I can show you exactly how we would do it now. It actually did not, what happened here? So we have our different materials. I just find it interesting as I do one, okay. It isn't showing up on the other, I don't think. But even though the cursor is, that's interesting. We'll have to look into that, but everything is finished. This is where naming your materials becomes important. Let's select that layer, just like I did before. I'm going to create um, a, UV mesh layer, uh, I would like to. What happened here? Maybe I need to save this texture out first, although I didn't have to do that last time. Let's see, make sure I have the right object selected. That might be it, and it is. Great, I have my UV mesh layer. This one is black because I changed that color to black. So if you want something a little bit easier to see, that can help. You can see now, hopefully, um, that a more detailed model is gonna have more things jammed into our texture editor window here. And you can still see the, the same layout for the cube, right? That same, um, you know, unfolded cube there, just a little bit smaller because it's also given us kind of the other parts. So, you know, once again, seams are important. If I was pr doing this, I would probably try and take these and put them inside each of the correct openings here so that way I could paint across them. Um, because right now, if I try to do that in a 2D view, it really isn't going to to work, okay? There's nothing on the middle here because you know the middle portion is one of these and I honestly don't even know which one. I could figure it out by going into polygon mode here and selecting it, um, but I'm not sure I need to do that. And that's where the 3D view can come in handy, right? Because now I can paint across this. Right, even though that kind of splat gets really repetitive. Let's go to our brush tool. Um, another thing I like to do with this is to add in 
almost like a little bit of that ambient occlusion where you have a little bit of kind of darkness uh, or shading in the corners here. And while you can do that with ambient occlusion and, and you know, depending on what render you're using, Redshift um, or the standard, there are obviously other options, but um, there are times on more detailed models that uh, I find I need to go through and just, you know, paint in something myself very quickly. So, you know, I could come back in, choose, uh, well, brush, although this isn't quite what I had in mind. It certainly works for some graffiti, right? Can see how nice that's working to just give us some detail. I maybe want to rotate this. There we go. Although, is that backwards? May have to flip the polygons there to get that to be something legible, though perhaps it's not supposed to be legible. But yeah, hopefully... That makes sense. Um, what ended up happening here is it switched this from generic, which um, is kind of our normal brush settings to bitmap if you want to load in um, an image. So uh, if you you know just kind of want to get back, this is one way you can do it. And so now I have this. And like I said, I could go in and try and paint some of that shading in the corners here. And I'm not worried about getting it perfect, right? That isn't the point of this. And I'm not even worried about how much or, you know, if I want to soften this or blur it, because like I said, that's probably something I would do in Photoshop. Just go in, convert the layer to a smart object probably, and, you know, blur it. Certainly I could do more of that in here by, you know, lowering the opacity, right? To kind of fake that. But, um, you know, I would rather, like I said, do it in Photoshop where I have a little bit more control, some other options, and can do it non-destructively if I'm I'm smart about it. Um, but that's another kind of example of where I might go in and paint some extra detail um, if I need it uh, before saving this out, along with kind of creating masks or areas that I know I'm going to need to do something with in Photoshop. Lastly, I you know, as a reminder, do make sure to save these textures out. Okay. Um, because that can be very helpful. Uh, and one other thing I'll, I'll show you is that you can bring in e existing images and textures in here. Um, if you come in and choose Merge Texture, um, I have one on my desktop we can choose. And it may say something about the texture size as being different. Um, it's asking me if I wanna scale the fit and I'll just say no. So we can see this is much larger, um, which isn't the end of the world. But yeah, I can then come in Scale this down, hold shift to do uniform. Oops, wrong layer selected there. May need to zoom out to do this. And come here to transform. You can see how large it is. All right, let's turn off these other layers to make this easier. I think this image is a bit too large um, for cinema to kind of work with here. So I think that is the problem. So actually, let's delete it and have it um, scale it down for me, if it can handle it, because it se seems to be giving me some issues. All right, here we are, bringing it in. Um, when it asks me to match the size, I'm going to hit yes. Okay, still taking a little bit longer than I would have liked. There it is, all scaled in. Make sure I have the correct layer selected. And yeah, now I could can scale this down and it's working a lot better, right? Like I said, this isn't necessarily the best, you know, place to create a whole complicated material like this from scratch, but it is possible by bringing in these textures. I can now duplicate this layer, you know, move it around um, and I could create, you know, this, uh, you know, crate um, using this technique. So. You know, wood texture there, obviously too small, but hopefully you get the idea. And I um, definitely wanted to make sure to go over how to bring in an existing texture or image that maybe you found online, you have from a library, you've bought, um, you got it. So that will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care.